All right, guys, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. If you've been with the channel a long time, you'll know that this is the Angry Brick Wall, or a new version of it in a free state. And I have something that has had me infuriated. Uh, and I hope you're going to be infuriated, too, because we're going to talk about three, three Republicans who voted for gun control, and we're supposed to believe that they did that, and it's a good thing. And I want to explain it to you. I'm going to give you a couple of things. First off, uh, f this information that I'm going to relay to you, um, I was able to verify it. And I even spoke with uh, the Firearms Owners Against Crime in Pennsylvania, who is the group who I'm going to give you their, their response, their official statement of what happened. And then we're going to dive into a little bit here of the facts. So House Bill 777, ghost gun ban, or looking to stop uh, free Americans in Pennsylvania from utilizing their right to keep bear arms, specifically mil building their own firearms. Something that's been illegal since before the United States was actually a country. It's always been legal. And that bill... FOAC, F-O-A-C, FOAC is, like I said, Firearms Owners Against Crime. And Jim Stoker is their president, who I spoke with. They were fighting hard to get people to come out and bug their politicians, bug their legislators, telling them not to vote for this. They were working with legislators to try to get them to vote against this. And some of this is a just a, a game of numbers. The makeup in the Pennsylvania House is 102 Democrats to 99 Republicans, as it sits, because one Republican is overseas uh, in the National Guard, another one recently quit. So it's 102 to 99. And this vote came down, and these three Republicans, I'm going to give you their names, uh, Joe Hogan, K.C. Tomlinson and Martina White. Mar Those three voted in favor of HB 777 banning ghost guns. We're going to use that term because that's what the bill's name is. Um, and rightly so, people are irate. And there have been, like, Gun Owners of America in Pennsylvania has come out uh, telling uh, what they did. I got this information last night. Uh, but I was not going to record a video immediately last night because I was I was angry, just like you should be in listening to this, and especially when you hear what I'm about to tell you. So, like I said, we're we're being told that this is a good thing that they voted for it uh, because of the long game, and the long game in Pennsylvania is maintaining control of the House and trying to win back a couple seats so that they don't become the next anti-gun state like Massachusetts. And I'm going to give you their statement of what uh, what they sent their, their, their folks, what they're telling their people, their members. It says, regardless of the flaws in the bill, regardless of the constitutional challenges raised by the just and correct legislators of the Commonwealth, regardless of the history of this nation, House Bill 777 passed yesterday on the floor of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. I would encourage members to realize that Republicans who voted in favor of this bill did so knowing they would lose their seats if they did not, not because they wanted to. I would encourage members to understand that even with those three Republicans voting against this bill, it would have passed 101 to 100, even with Democrat Frank Burns voting against the bill. Understand these Republicans know this bill will not become law, because their fellow Republicans in the Senate will kill it promptly. Understand the only reason the Democrats ran this bill was to make these Republicans either vote this way and get attacked by 2A groups, which has already started, or vote our way and get attacked by the local voters over a vote they could not win. Try to remember those Republicans are in heavy Democrat districts, and we need them to stay in their seats to regain the House and stop this nonsense. More importantly, it is time to go after the Democrats ignoring the Constitution of this land. It is time to spend money and effort in replacing uh, Anita Kulik, Nick Piscitano, Jim Haddock, Eddie Pashinsky, and Robert Matzi. 
it is time FOAC Institute became more active in replacing the anti-gun legislators who cower from the leftist tyrannical leadership and remind these representatives that our right to keep and bear arms in defense of ourselves and the state shall not be questioned. The Senate has killed this bill before it is even officially reported. We hope. Uh, but we can count, but we cannot count on that forever. It's time to engage. Donations can be made on the website. Email me with how engaged you are willing to become. We have a lot to do. Let's get started. Jim Stoker, president of FOAC Institute. Now, I read that last night, and I was immediately irate. Because those of you who have been on, the, on this channel for a long time, you know where I stand. I am a no, I'm a no compromise guy. I just am. You don't you don't give rights away in hopes that those people who want you disarmed here we're talking about the Second Amendment specifically will ever give something back because they never do. Just like we don't play we don't placate with free speech. We don't placate with the Fourth Amendment. We don't say like oh we're gonna give up a little bit of our our protection against unreasonable searches and seizures so that we can keep the house. Because ultimately they want to take that away from you. Um, so my thing is this, and I've, I've said this before to legislators, and I, I said it to, to Jim Stoker too, and I, I would say it to each one of these Republicans who voted for the gun control. W why? What does it matter if you get to keep your seat? Because if you're voting like a Democrat, you might as well be replaced by a Democrat. And I know that's not going to sound great. Like, Jared, you want to give up the House? Well, if they're not standing for what they should be standing for, then so be it. I would, I'm going to use a sports metaphor. I would rather these three Republicans go down swinging rather than, sorry, it's getting windy, rather than to go down looking so that they can keep their seat and keep their job. That is not how I play. Guys, you don't vote against the Constitution. And if you do, just like I said in the video about Tulsi Gabbard, if you do, you should not be easily forgiven, if ever forgiven. So for the three who voted against the Constitution and voted against the Second Amendment, like, stand, standing on principle, for me, means a lot. I understand the situation that they're in in Pennsylvania because I come from the future. In Massachusetts, this is what happened in Massachusetts. The numbers are, are worked in a way, they're rigged in a way that if... They continue to run these anti-gun bills, and there's more in the in the works. There's an assault weapon ban. There's uh, mandated safe storage, and then there's the the mandated reporting for lost and stolen firearms. Those are still waiting in the House. They're going to try to get these three to keep voting in favor of it, so that they get voted out. And they think that because it's a republic, a Democrat-controlled district, that they'll get the Democrat seat. Or if these three had the balls to vote affirmatively against anti-gun bills rather than voting for them because that's what they did they're supporting the gun control bill hoping the senate will kill it now the senate probably will based off of makeup but they're politicians maybe they will maybe they won't but i would rather have them go down swinging do the job that your conservative brethren elected you to do don't crawfish don't squirrel away to live to fight another day. That's how this country, in my opinion, has gotten to where it is right now. Is For far too long, we haven't wanted to stand. I don't know if you've noticed, but people are starting to stand. Uh, so, my thing here is, I am not here to shred FOAC. I understand the position they're in, because again... When I was in Massachusetts, it was very similar. They got to keep those, they're trying to keep those seats because FOAC is a Pennsylvania only group. They only care about Pennsylvania, and the Second Amendment goes away if they lose the Senate and the House because their governor right now sucks pretty bad. But if you vote against it, hoping the other chamber will do it, that's a game you're not guaranteed to win either. So for me, do your job, go down swinging. It's my opinion. I'm not telling you guys and gals to shred FOAC. I understand their position. The, the decision is yours. Do you stand on principle? The Constitution is the Constitution. And anybody who votes against that 
is a traitor to freedom, to our forefathers who died for that? Or are you on this side where you say, yeah, you know what? If it's going to lose no matter what in the Senate, then so be it. Maybe we get to keep those seats in the House. But I also want to say this is those three uh, Republicans that I mentioned, and I want to give you their names again because I want to be accurate. Um, come on. It's uh, White, Hogan, Tomlinson. Joe Hogan, Casey Tomlinson, Martina White. They've all voted for gun control before. So to say it was a strategic option for them, I don't know if that holds water. I don't know if it holds water because they have uh, Hogan and Tomlinson previously voted for universal registration checks and red flag gun confiscation last year in 23. Martina White voted for universal registration checks in 2023. Um, so I think that needs to be said as well. If we're going to pitch this, if OAC's going to pitch this, like saying we did this because it was going to get killed in the Senate and we need to keep that house, then why have they done it before? Why do they continue to vote on uh, for gun control bills? Why are they in favor of infringing upon the only right that says shall not be infringed? You all help me decide. I want to see your comments down below. And if you like this information about groups backing the actions of politicians who have taken an action against the Constitution, then subscribe to this channel down below. I'll bring it to you. I'll let you make your own mind up. I'm not going to tell you what you should think. I think go down swinging. Try to hit that home run. Try to get a base hit. But don't go down looking. That's just me. What say you? Subscribe to the channel. You're your own first responder. No politician will ever help you. No government employee will ever help you when evil is looking you face to face. Remember that. Take care.